What's up, squad? Back with another video. As y'all can see, a little bit different video today. Got the Panama Canal crisis um, and how it impacts the world economy. Um, this is, you know, um, uh, something that I want to check out um, to know about. Had a few people, um, even uh, just a few people, email me this uh, particular video and the, um, this video. So I want to check it out. Um, I know a lot of others wanted me to check this out. So. Um, if there's any videos you want to check out, make sure y'all email me lifereckless at yahoo.com or DM uh, me on Instagram, Life Reckless. Let's get in a video. So I don't know if you're following the story on what's going on in Panama Canal, but it's very problematic. 40% of the stuff that you and I buy comes through the Panama Canal and due to the drought that they're having over there, ships are waiting. Just in July was taking five and a half uh, days to six and a half days for ships to transit. See, and I didn't even know anything about this. Like this, I'm just, this is new information to me. Um, and I love reacting to videos that you know, that's new. I didn't know anything about this. So it's definitely very- So different. waiting, just in July was taking five and a half days to six and a half days for ships to transit through, whether it's the northbound or the southbound transit, that five and a half to six and a half days is now 18 to 21 days. And you and I are buying this stuff. So a lot of ships have to go all the way around. Big problem, a couple years ago, if you remember what happened to Suez Canal, that's a great case study to see how bad it's gonna be here. We're gonna take a deep dive on what's going on with the Panama Canal and how it can affect you. Okay, so if you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into it. Let me give you some facts here on what we're looking at. Number one, I told you 40% of containers that come to US travel through the Panama Canal, 6% of all global trade goes through the canal, and Panama Canal is the busiest canal in the world, handling over 14,000 ships per year. By the way, if you've never been there, I've been wow. there before. It's an incredible experience seeing how ships are elevated. Water is used to elevate ships or lower ships. That's the whole concept of the canal it's unbelievable what it does and how important it is to That's us wild. specifically you and i when we're buying stuff the canal is expected to reach capacity by 2030 and the expansion of the canal which they're talking about is expected to cost 5.25 billion dollars and take five years to complete the Panama Canal is the busiest canal in the world handling over 14,000 ships here which is roughly 40 ships a day and this past July, the number of ships day. allowed to pass per day was lowered from 40 a day give or take to 28 to 32 a day so now, what does this mean? If you look at this map here, you'll notice there's two ways for ships to come through from New York to California. So if you look at it, the short way is New York, ship comes down, goes through the Panama Canal, and goes straight to LA. If the canal mm. is problematic, these ships have to go all the way south, all the way south, and then come that up to LA, wild. California. And let's look at what that really costs, how long it takes, what's the problem with that? Here's what it looks like. With the Panama Canal, it's only 4,970 nautical miles. Without it, it's 12,350. With the canal, it's only 10 to 14 yes. days to go from New York to California. Without it, it's 30 to 35 days. With so we're talking about you going what? Either two, what dang, that's, that's like a little bit, almost two weeks, I would say, give or take. Almost two weeks from to a month. So going from like a little over a week of getting it there to a month is crazy. 10 to 14 days That's to go from New York to California. Without it, it's 30, 30 to, to 35, 35 days. days. With it, it's only $262,000, roughly fuel cost. Without it, it's $705,000. With it, it's calm conditions. Without it, gets violent at the bottom when they're going through. So obviously wow. when you look at that number, it's kind of like, imagine you're trying to go home and the main freeway is closed. Okay, where typically you're going home, it takes you 20 minutes to go. Then let's just say five miles and it costs you 10 bucks for gas prices. Now, if the freeway's closed, you have to go all the way this way, go all the way around. How many more miles is it? How much more time is it? How much more gas are you gonna spend? That's exactly what's going on here. But here they're bringing goods through canal. Now watch what happens if they're going from China, Shanghai to New York. Here's what it looks like with the canal as well as without the canal. With it, it's roughly 12,000 miles. Without it, it's roughly 19,000 miles. With it, it takes 22 to 25 days. Without it, it takes 35 to 40 days. With it, it's only $600,000 of fuel cost. Without it, it's roughly 900,000. Again, That's conditions come with it, 
violent without it. So obviously it doesn't take a mad genius to say, I would much rather go through Panama Canal because it's going to be the most effective way. Now, to understand the importance of Panama Canal, how political of a project this was, how many people's lives and businesses' lives had changed, we have to go back and study the history of the Panama Canal. Here's what we learned. The idea of a canal across the Isthmus of Panama was proposed in the early 16th century. However, it wasn't until 1880 that a French company began construction on a canal and the project was abandoned due to engineering challenge of financial problem. In 1901, the U.S. took over the project and completed it in 10 years in 1914. Mm. The canal was a major engineering feat and it revolutionized global trade. The canal was also a major strategic asset for the United States during World War II. It allowed the U.S. to rapidly deploy ships and troops between the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. And so this go way back. See, I didn't know anything about this. And that's 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 what I and I probably seen some about it, but I didn't pay much attention. And that's why I'm glad that, you know, uh, Y'all send these type of videos and I'm reacting to these type of videos and stuff like that. Different videos um, that gives a lot of information because I didn't know much about allowed this. the U.S. to rapidly deploy ships and troops between the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. In 1977, the U.S. and Panama signed the Torrios Carter Treaties, which transferred control of the canal to Panama in 1999. Now, you and I, we're just watching this video, living our lives. We, we don't know what it took to build a canal. We just kind of sit there and say, what's the big deal? It's just a canal. It's not like it's that complicated of a project. Do you know how many people died building a canal? 22,000 people died oh, wow. during the French construction efforts. And an additional 5,609 people died during the American construction. For a total of 27,609 wow. people died building the Panama Canal. So you may ask, what did they die from? One, the explosive yeah. for the way you have to do to build a canal. It's not the easiest thing to do. They die from mosquitoes. They die from malaria. They die from black vomit, internal bleeding, back pain, extreme thirst, a lot of different things. This was Dang. not the safest conditions for these guys to build what they build. We benefit from it on the backs of 27,000 people that died building the Panama Canal. In other words, they Dang. did the impossible. We're the beneficiaries of their efforts. Pretty wild mm. when you think about it, but it how is. does the Panama Canal work? So the Panama Canal allows ships to transit between Atlantic and Pacific Ocean without having to navigate the violent waters around the southern tip of South America. So one of the coolest things is well, while you're there, they have a nice hotel, the Hard Rock Cafe. They have a Hard Rock Hotel there right next to Roberto Duran's restaurant. And they'll say, hey, it's the only place in the world where you can go have breakfast at the Atlantic and have lunch at the Pacific. That's kind of what you get oh, to do. And cool. it's what a lot of people do when they go there for vacation. So now the lock system, the canal uses a system of locks, large chambers that can be filled or emptied of water when a ship enters a lock, water is either pumped in to raise the ship or let out to lower the ship, enabling it to transit from sea level up to the level of Gatton Lake, an artificial lake created for the canal, and then back down to sea level on the other side. So each vessel that passes through uses roughly 51 million gallons of water from the lake. So if you look at this chart here to the left, you'll see the Atlantic Ocean. To the right, you'll see the Pacific Ocean. Then you have the Miraflores Lake. It's elevating the ship to Gatton Lake and then decreasing, lowering the ship to go to the Atlantic Ocean. The entire transit through the canal takes roughly eight to 10 hours, depending on various factors. Again, pretty intense for what these guys have built. Absolutely wow. insane for engineers to have built something like this. Number two, Time and money save impact on global trade if the canal were inaccessible. So, so obviously the first one would be the diversion of routes. The second one would be increased costs. Then it would be supply chain disruptions. Economic impact countries and ports that rely heavily on trade through the canal would suffer economically. Potential price increases to you and I, we would be paying more. The increased cost of shipping goods could lead to higher prices for consumers around the world, especially for products. Yeah, because think just thinking about like all the stuff they have to do, like if it's, it's taking the ships a while to get there and that the the money is obviously going to raise up i mean we talking about days that long days we talking about gas heavily reliant on these shipping routes so what are or some of the products let's take a look top 10 u.s imports number one printers 14 billion dollars of printers then it's tvs then car parts and sweaters furniture video games pills computers toys shoes and if you look at the top 10 u.s imports purely by weight furniture four million metric tons and it's bananas artwork, car parts, coal, beer, oil, tires, seeds, tiles. And by the way, how long can banana sit there? Think about it. Uh, you right. think banana can sit there for three weeks? You ever have banana at the kitchen? You leave it there for three mm. weeks? What happens to it? Imagine wow. we're talking 2.8 metric tons of banana sitting there for 21 days. Now watch the exports, what this looks like. We're shipping it out. Top 10 exports by value. Number one is cars, plastic, construction machinery, car parts, cotton, scrap metal, nuts, pork, 
wood pulp, lab equipment, and if you look at it by weight, number one is scrap paper, scrap metal, wood pulp, plastic, hay, fresh paper, cotton, sugar, soybeans, chicken. This is catastrophic if this goes from taking five and a half days to six yeah. and a half days to 18 to 21 days. So by mm -hmm. the way, you may be saying, Pat, I got 17 different problems I'm dealing with right now. You want me to be thinking about the Panama Canal? Why should this matter to me? Why should I learn more about this? Because do you remember what happened to the Suez Canal when that one ship was stuck? And every minute of the day, we were watching the news showing us about this one ship in Suez Canal and why you and I should be worried about it and how everybody was talking about it. That's why that case study is preparing us for that not to happen with Panama Canal. On March mm. 23rd, the every given ship, a container ship ran aground in the Suez Canal, blocking one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. The ship was en route from China to Netherlands when it ran aground in a strong windstorm. It took six days to free the ship. During the time, an estimated 400 ships were- 400 ships was delayed? When was this again? It was in 2021. See, I didn't even know anything about this. I didn't know anything about this. I feel like a lot of these videos that I that I like react to and stuff like that. I I really hope and pray that it gets out to the people that isn't paying that much attention. I feel like that's that's a goal, you know, to do because this stuff is important. I feel like it's important. Ships were delayed. The blockage caused an estimated $9.6 billion in losses to global trade. To tell you crazier stats about this, how much do you think the blockage of the Suez Canal cost losses per hour? 10 million an hour? 100 million an hour? How about $400 million an hour? The blockage delayed the delivery of essential goods such as food, medicine, and fuel, and it also caused a spike in the price of oil and other commodities. It also highlighted the vulnerability of global economy to disruptions in shipping. What this incident of ever given in Suez Canal taught the world a number of lessons about shipping and logistics, including the global economy is highly dependent on shipping. Shipping disruptions can have a significant impact on the global economy. There's a need for increased investment in alternative shipping routes. There's a need for better risk management in shipping. There's a need for better communication and cooperation between shipping companies and governments. And by the way, just like the Panama Canal was revolutionary, so was the Suez Canal. Here's why. The Suez Canal is a man-made sea level waterway between the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. It connects the Indian Ocean with the Atlantic Ocean through the Red Sea and Mediterranean Sea respectively and provides the shortest sea link between Europe and Asia. If you look at this map, you'll notice you can either go from Mumbai to London all the way around south through Africa or you can go through the Suez Canal straight shot to London uh, and save yourself 50% of the route. Wow. It was built over 10 years in the mid 19th century. The canal officially opened up November 17 of 1869. Originally constructed without locks, the canal was converted to a lock system in 1980, roughly 110 years later, the Suez Canal is one of the world's most strategically important waterways and is vital to global trade. The canal is also a major source of revenue for Egypt, which operates and maintains it. So now this is a lot of problems we're talking about. Is there any solution? Are they making any kind of progress? What's going to be happening? You don't want to be affected by this. Here's a good news. When you think about this, capitalism always works. The Panama Canal makes Panama roughly $2 billion per year in profits. If they do this expansion of the $5.25 billion, they're going to make another billion dollars. Now, it's going to take five years for them to build this. So Panama may say, well, we don't want to use the money right now to put $5.25 billion. Another country may say, you don't want to do it? No problem. I'll give you the money, but we got to own a piece of it as well, moving forward with the profits. Mm. Then Panama's going to say, no, 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 no. Then the world's going to say, well, then hurry up and do it because you kind of need us. We're the customer. Panama may say, well, then what are you going to do about it if I don't do it? It's going to cost you more anyway. So it's going to be a power play on companies can oh, end up wow. paying for it. It's kind of like relationships when a vendor and a company, the product producer and the marketer, they both need each other because the product's working very well. They have to figure out a way to make it work. But regardless, Facts. they got to move fast. The good news is just like the Panama Canal Authority is undertaking a $5.25 billion project to add a third set of locks to the canal, Suez Canal Authority is also taking $8.5 billion development project to widen and deepen the canal. This will also increase capacity and reduce shipping costs. On top of that, both the Panama Canal and the Suez Canal Authority are investing in new technologies to improve efficiency and safety. For example, the Panama Canal Authority is implementing an automated lock system and the Suez Canal Authority is installing new navigation aids. Both canal authorities are also working to reduce the environmental impact of their operations. For example, Panama Canal Authority is investing in water conservation and flood control measures and the Suez Canal Authority is working to reduce pollution. Now, the best part about this is if Panama Canal doesn't have another competition, they can do whatever they want to do. The best mm. part when there's another competition, they have to really accelerate and get going. And there's possibly 
another route through where? Nicaragua. The Nicaragua Canal is a proposed canal that would connect the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic through Nicaragua. The canal is estimated to cost $50 billion to build and oh, it will wow. take 10 years to complete. So a lot of these issues that's Oof. being dealt right now, they have to figure out a way to address it. But if we got another option, it's going to make that better for you and I. So next time you're in your car or you're using something that Facts. we talked about out of these products, just make sure for a second, drop a prayer for the people in Panama who are doing what they do for us to be able to Facts. have the goods that we have because it's not easy to do what they're doing. They're very important. Anyways, if you got value out of this video, give it a thumb. Yeah, definitely. Give it a thumbs up. This is definitely uh, something to think about. Uh, definitely wanted to say that about the end of the video, but he said it for me. This is you do get on prayers to them. I mean, being... Being out there for so long, um, I didn't even know that happened in 2021 with them being stuck, like being stuck and like that. Although that's a lot of money sitting there, but you gotta think, like I was just sitting there thinking like, dang, like, believe it or not, like them people got families, like they they basically doing all of this for us to have product. Um, and that's that's crazy. Um, this is stuff that's, that's obviously new to me, um, definitely informative. And I hope and pray that it gets, you know, to some people, you know, um, because it's, it's definitely uh, informative. Like it's, it's, it's has a lot of information. It's real fascinating too. Um, but make sure y'all hit the like button, subscribe. I definitely appreciate y'all tuning in. Make sure y'all DM me on Instagram, Life for Reckless, or email me, Life for Reckless at Definitely appreciate y'all. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Catch y'all next one.